Hi, I'm Josephine Estrada from Purdue University, bringing you a Boiler Bites story about the very latest in concussion research. Purdue's Tom Talavage and Eric Nauman have been trying to tackle the problem of concussions for over six years. They now have new research-based evidence to indicate that it's not just hard hits to the head that are causing damage to the brain. In this next segment, you'll find out that sometimes the little things can have a big effect. When we started this project uh, six years ago now, uh, one of the first things we actually discovered was using our neuroimaging techniques where we're looking at the activity in the brain while you're performing a relatively straightforward task. We found that there were appreciable changes, so the brain really was changing how it was performing even though we had individuals, players who are participating in high school football who had not been diagnosed with a concussion. We had a number of individuals who did not have any symptoms that would cause one to say something is wrong with them. When we brought them into our imaging, we actually found that their brains were not healthy. One of the things that we learned early on is that the, um, the number of hits that, that athletes take seems to generate damage in the brain, changes in the brain over time. Um, but we weren't quite sure how extensive those changes were. And since that time, one of the things that we found is that there's changes in neurophysiology across the board. We have continued with the work. We're now in the middle of our sixth year of this ongoing study, working with some of the local high school football and girls soccer teams. And what we have found is that not only do we get these functional changes that we've talked about in the past, but we're actually seeing changes in the biochemistry in the brain, in the way that the vascular system is responding to local changes or local activity within the brain, and we're also seeing changes in how various regions of the brain are talking to one another. So we've been able to document a large number of functional changes, and now we're also starting to get some useful information suggesting that there are structural changes where the pathway that allow the brain to pass information from one location to the next are also at some level being damaged in these athletes who are otherwise without symptoms and shouldn't be pulled aside by an athletic trainer or a team physician to be looked at. So it's really starting to suggest that all of these repeated blows to the head that these players are taking are really causing some low level of injury that's accumulating over time. These changes are found in a, in a big enough percentage of the athletes that we really need to take measures to protect everybody. It's not just trying to find the one type of hit that causes a concussion um, or maybe the one type of hit that causes long-term damage. It's really about protecting all the players taking the hits that they're taking now and reducing those dramatically. It is these rotational accelerations of the head that are actually causing stresses and strains on the tissue in the brain that may be the underlying cause of some of this accumulated injury. Now you're a football player, you're getting hit, particularly if you are the person being hit and your head is snapping around, you're kind of lowering your head, coming in and hitting, and your head gets knocked to the side when you do that hit. It's those rotational accelerations that are suspected by the community to be the actual cause of these short and potentially these long-term injuries. We realized fairly early on that, the, that just looking at symptoms wasn't enough. You had, to, you had to have an idea of what's happening inside the brain, biochemically, physiologically. One of the things that I think is ultimately gonna come out of this work is we're gonna be able to define what is safe or allowable for, for athletes Right, so any changes that, we, that, that are made to make the game safer, we can actually evaluate those with neuroimaging. That, that's one of the things that we absolutely have to do. The benefits of what we're doing for athletes is that we wanna get rid of a lot of these long-term problems. The NFL just said that I think somewhere between 25 and 33% of their, their athletes will have um, early onset Alzheimer's or dementia. My fear though is that college players could be susceptible to that or even high school players if they started playing early on. So I know that we can make the game safer to the point where we can bring those numbers back to where they should be. We're looking at sport, but this is really not fundamentally about sport. This is ultimately about, yes, everyday life. Are we having individuals who are involved in bicycle accidents, car accidents, falls off of swings, domestic violence? When we look at the military and we're dealing with soldiers who are in Humvees that maybe roll over somewhere or they're in the vicinity of a concussive blast from an IED, 
all of those individuals are likely to experience some level of neurotrauma just from the forces that are ultimately incident upon the head and some of that energy getting transmitted on into the brain. And so this provides us the laboratory to look at that. And admittedly, if along the way we can find ways to make these sports safer for our kids, hey, that is a wonderful bonus on top of being able to help the broader population. We actually can make these sports safe. I think a lot of people have kind of given up in the sense that they say, well, it's a heavy contact sport, therefore there's nothing that can be done. But actually the technology exists, so I think this is something that can be done and can be done very quickly. What we really would like to be able to do is to grow this study, to collect large numbers of athletes over the course of a season, whether they be from football teams and soccer teams. We need to get some of the non-collision sports involved so we can make a meaningful comparison to rule out activity versus collisions. And if we can achieve that, where we really perform that large study, then we can meaningfully answer which hits or which accelerations of the head are meaningful. And that would allow us to then move into the direction of how do we prevent those particular events from occurring and how do we monitor for those events and based on their observation start to control or meter the subsequent exposure of an individual to further head trauma. So we know a kid been taken, has taken a couple of hits that we know can be bad. It might be time for him to sit out of practice so that he can play in the game and be healthier. I think we have some, some great ideas. I think if we can test a few of them out over the next couple of years, we can set the field on a path that is going to be much, much safer than the one that is currently on. That wraps up another Boiler Bites. Be sure to check us out online at BoilerBites.com. We'll see you next time.